Hey everyone, this is Nick. Welcome back to Duality Repair and welcome to Chapter 3 of the Pioneer SX 1980 series. If you haven't seen the first two videos in the series yet, you have to go back and watch those two first. You missed a ton of work that I've done up to this point. What I hope to accomplish in this chapter is to completely redo the entire front end. And so everything you see in front of you, this face, all of the knobs, that's going to be pulled and cleaned. I'm also going to pull and completely rework all of the boards that are associated with the front end. So the tone amp board, the flat amp board, all of those. But first, I want to do a little bit more work on each amplifier unit. Now, I know I've pulled these several times. I've done a ton of work on them already. There's just a few more things that I need to do to make it as good as I can possibly make it. And so if you'll bear with me, it'll just take a few minutes, then we'll move on to the front. Here's the right amplifier board. And there are three things that I want to get done on each channel. First is, even though these are brand new, I want to replace the two electrolytics here. Now, there's certainly nothing wrong with these. They are appropriately rated, but they're very tall, they're very narrow, and the lead spacing is such that they're not allowed to sit flush to the board. And so anytime I even touch these, they feel very flimsy. I'm afraid that one day they are going to vibrate loose and maybe crack the solder joints. And so I'm going to replace them with these. This is from Panasonic. It's got the same capacitance at 100 microfarad. Quite a bit more cushion on the voltage rating at 160. Not that we need it, but it certainly won't hurt. And it's got the same temperature tolerance at 105 degrees C. They're just a little bit shorter than the ones I have in now. Quite a bit fatter, but most importantly, the lead spacing. The lead spacing will allow these to sit flush with the board. So I'm going to be a lot more comfortable with these installed. Second, although I've already replaced these two potentiometers, one for the idle current, one for the DC offset, these, just like the capacitors, feel a little underrated for the board. Every time I adjust them, I feel like I'm going to break them off the board. And so I'm just going to use these instead. It's the same manufacturer, of course, the same resistance, but uh, quite a bit larger. I'll feel a lot more comfortable with these in place. And finally, I was actually unable to originally adjust the DC offset to spec. And I believe the reason for this is because I replaced all of the transistors on the board. And the transistors that are specifically involved with the DC offset circuitry are of a little higher gain than the originals. And so there's higher current within that circuit. And so when you're unable to adjust the DC offset to spec, the service manual actually suggests that you remove this jumper. See the two green wires? That was one jumper wire that I clipped. And what that does is it introduces that adjacent resistor, which is 120K ohms, it introduces that resistance into the DC offset circuitry. So that did allow me to adjust it. However, the potentiometer was very near its end of travel. And so if there's any drifting over time, a future owner may not be able to adjust the DC offset to spec again. And so to avoid that, I want to build in a little bit more buffer on the potentiometer. And so I'm going to increase the resistance here. This is 120K ohm. I'm going to try 160. If that's too much, I'll reduce it to 140. And if it's too little, I'll increase it to 180. Either way, we will get there. All right, the work on the two amplifiers is complete. I was able to easily adjust the idle current and DC offset for both channels. And both potentiometers still have plenty of room. I was also able to verify that we still have an output from both channels, so we're all good there. Time to move on to the front. I removed the front face plate, and I'm pretty excited. By the end of this video, this receiver is going to be looking really pretty. This should all clean up, no problem. But of course, there's a lot of work to do electrically. You can see two boards here. There's a bunch of boards underneath as well. So I'm going to start disassembling. Here is the tone control board responsible for adjusting the bass and the treble. Switch in the center is just the tone control on off switch. All of the electrolytics on here are the original elements. They'll all get replaced. There's only four transistors. I will pull and test those. If they look okay, I'll probably leave them in. Otherwise, I will replace those as well. And then, of course, I need to clean all of the switches. Hopefully, that's all I need to do here. On the right is the flat amp board. So on the far right, we have the muting switch, volume potentiometer, balance potentiometers, loudness switch, stereo mono switch, and then some tape switches. All of these switches and potentiometers are going to be cleaned 
thoroughly. All of the electrolytics will be replaced and then the few transistors that are on this board will also be pulled and tested and only replaced as needed. There are a lot more boards that I'll be working on, but in order to avoid being overwhelmed, I'm just gonna work on these two boards to start. I'm gonna do all the work that I mentioned. I'm gonna reinstall them and then test them to make sure they're functional. Once they are, I'll move on to the following boards. I ordered the parts for these two boards and all of these boards, and so while I wait, I'm gonna work on cleaning this front faceplate. You can see how much dirt, dust, has built up over the years on the metal and the glass and I actually started cleaning it on the right here so hopefully you can see how much better that right side looks and there's no water or chemicals used on that just a rag and some time so I think this is going to turn out really really nice I'm going to get to work on that this will do I pulled all of the electrolytics and all four transistors off of the tone control board. I'm gonna clean the board up just a little bit and install the new capacitors. All new electrolytics have been installed. I think the board looks great. Let's take a look at the four transistors. First one looks good. So does the second. And the third. And the fourth as well. These are all fine, let's get them reinstalled. It's been completely recapped and I've reinstalled the four functional transistors. Now it's time to clean the potentiometers. All right, the tone control and flat amp boards are done. I have a 15 kilohertz sine wave at each auxiliary input. And actually we can see the auxiliary LED is illuminated. Good to see that's working as is the speaker A output LED. So let's start with the volume. We'll turn that up. That looks good. Let's check the muting switch. Also good. How about the balance? That looks good. And since we're at such a high frequency, let's check out the treble controls. That one's working, as is that. And this is a 100 hertz sine wave, so let's check out the bass controls. That one's working, as is this one. That's great. This is all checking out pretty good so far, so let's move on to the rest of these boards here. It was a bit of a nightmare to get here, but all of the top boards are now exposed for me to work on. I'll start over here on the left with the meter amplifier board. On this board, we have three switches that need to get cleaned. These two electrolytics will get replaced. 
Apparently, these two blue caps are also electrolytics. I was mistaking these for film caps, but apparently they are just low value electrolytics. Now there's a bunch of these on the tone control board that I missed, so I'll have to go back and replace those and replace these two as well. The learning never stops. If I can, I'll pull and inspect the four transistors here, and then I'll just do a general cleaning of the board itself. That should be it. All right, nothing much to show on this meter amplifier board. It's all ready to go. I'm gonna get it reinstalled. Up next is the filter board. There are five switches to clean, eight of what I believe are tantalum electrolytics to replace, and unfortunately I did break a wire off. There's a lot of tension when removing all of these boards in the front, and I wouldn't be surprised if I broke a few more off as I'm working on this, but we'll get it reattached and then reinstall the board. All right, the filter board is done as well. Let's get this one reinstalled. Up next is the function selector board, and it's such a terrible angle because there's just no play in this board and I don't want to break any more wires. So you can see we have five switches that will get cleaned, and then there's just one lonely electrolytic capacitor in the back that'll get replaced. Other than that, this board will be really quick. Unfortunately, you can see this ribbon cable here that contains three wires connecting the function selector board to the cartridge load board. The top casing on there has just deteriorated over time, so I'm gonna have to replace all three of those wires. When I'm done with that, both of these boards can be reinstalled. Here's the last board in this little batch. This is the APC slash mic control board. It too has one lone electrolytic. It's got the tantalum. I will replace that with a standard aluminum electrolytic. I'll get that reinstalled. Then we can reinstall the flat amp board. And we'll move on to the EQ assembly down there. And finally, we have the EQ amplifier board. This board is just loaded with electrolytics that need to be replaced. Unfortunately, the larger sets here, here, and here have been glued down, so they're not going to be very fun to pull off, but we'll get it done.
All right, I'm finally starting to see the light at the end of this Pioneer SX 1980 tunnel. So everything in the front is done electrically. You can see I've put it all back together. I've also cleaned everything in the front cosmetically to the best of my ability, the front face plate, all of the knobs, that back plate as well. I've also sanded, restained, and clear coated these two side wood posts as well as the main wood cabinet. It's all looking really, really good. So there's just a few issues that I see. They're very, very minor. So you can see we do have a solid output from both power meters, but I don't think these are calibrated. I'm at about 15 volts peak to peak right now. You can't see it on the scope, but that's where we're at. And it's only showing about one watt, and that's certainly not one watt. So I think these just need to be calibrated. We'll do that in the next video. There's a few other minor issues. So you can see speaker A LED is illuminated. That's great. If I engage speaker B, this output does work. I've tested it, but you see we have no LED illumination. We'll have to fix that. Same with speaker C. No LED illumination. We'll fix that. Some of these buttons over here. So the FM LED is illuminated, but it's pretty dim, so I think I'll want to replace that one. AM looks pretty good. Auxiliary, we already saw, that looks great. Phono 2 looks fine. Phono 1 looks fine. So just some minor issues to correct for the next video, but there's still one big thing, and I think I need some help with this. If part four for this series isn't out yet, that means I'm still looking for some pieces. So what do I need? I need this power switch knob here. It's different from these. I believe it's different because it's got a different bracket here. I'm also missing two of these knobs. They should be identical to these. And I'm missing another one of these knobs, which will go on this muting switch here. I'm also missing these two covers here. And finally, for some reason, someone clipped and removed the antenna. So if anyone can help me locate any of these parts, I would greatly appreciate it. On the next video, we're gonna tackle the RF section and hopefully fix any other minor issues that we might have, do some final alignment and testing, and we can finally wrap this thing up. So thanks for watching.